Chad, Bryson DeChambeau, we knew he was mentioned for the Live Tour. This was going back a couple of months uh, with both him and Dustin Johnson. He's made it official, and the Live Tour made it official. On day number two of the, the London series that teed off yesterday, they've officially announced, uh, announced that Bryson DeChambeau, uh, he is in. And uh, again, now we wait on other big names. The, the most recent rumors out there um, that have merit, because all these guys have been quote-unquote rumored that have jumped, the next one, Ricky Fowler, Chad, who you mentioned earlier this week, and Bubba Watson also being mentioned for the Live Tour. Yeah, it's, uh, look, those are the names. I mean, uh, you, you go down the list, we know who's been loyal so far. The PGA puts the memo out about loyalty. Jordan Spieth, Tiger Woods. We know some of the bigger names in golf that remain loyal to the PGA Tour, but Bryson DeChambeau's a big name. So that was reported earlier this week. Now it's confirmed by the Live Tour, who made that announcement. Uh, Ricky Fowler, the other one you mentioned, Hutton. Now, to me, it's all a game of what do those 48 look like? We talked about going after the top 100. Well, if you get 20 names that we all immediately recognize in golf, and they're already at probably six or seven, so if that number continues to, to tick up and up and up, it's already a problem for the PGA Tour. It's going to be a really big problem for the PGA Tour if they continue to just overbid by a mile and outspend the PGA Tour and guys take the money, take the bag, as they, as they put it, then you're going to see more and more of this. I don't know. I think the PGA Tour knows it can't compete with the money, even right now. Um, as it was explained to me by someone on the tour, right now the Live Tour could outspend the liquid assets of the PGA Tour 10 to 1. And when you consider that and the fact that they don't even have a massive television contract yet uh, anywhere, but they're, they're already streaming, and everything else that could happen with this, I don't know if it's the right tactic to declare war the way the PGA Tour has, given the fact that for the first time they've got a legitimate competitor. And when you scoff at that and you say, oh, it's 48 players, and I, I want to reiterate this. There are about 30 to 35 professional golfers that carry the PGA Tour on their back based on their name, image, likeness, their brand, uh, why we tune in. And aside from tuning in for the majors, which are three of the four are going to let these guys play, presumably, if you've got 20 of the 35 names as to why we tune in, that is a huge hit to the PGA Tour who are banning these guys. They're banning their own marketing brands from playing on their tour if they wanted to, um, to the point where these guys are just resigning to take the bag of cash. It, it, it was an interesting play with the statement, the way they released it. But they had to, in a way, because they had threatened this all along, and these guys called, called them on their bluff because the money's legit. Well, they could have been called on their bluff and showed that they were bluffing and not say anything and allow the guys to come back, but they decided to double down. So I wouldn't say they had to do this. They just decided to stick with what they were doing before no, you, the, and make the statement. They had to do it based on the way the sponsors reacted. I mean, yeah, I, and, I, I, I guess. And, and it has been put out there that the PGA called in major favors to, in, to make sure that a TV network did not link up with them. Yeah, so that, if you've done that in the background... That's where they're being helped. But if, yes, if you've done that, then you can't, a month and a half later, when this thing's about to tee off, say, you know what, go ahead. It doesn't work like well, that. Well, and what I mean by, again, when you go with the they had to do this, all I'm saying is what you have to factor in for the PGA Tour is to come back to those sponsors who say, I'm going to pull my money, since I'm pulling my money from Dustin Johnson or whoever else, if you allow these guys back, you have to start thinking about the opportunity cost of how much less those sponsorships will be worth I agree. if fewer people watch your product because you don't allow all but, these guys back. But here's so what they're worried about. That's looking at the here and now, right? You've got to look at the now. We can't lose these sponsorship dollars. But you also have to look at it a year or two in the future. If we don't allow all these guys back and our product is worse and no one knows the players and no one watches, we're not getting as money from television networks. We're not getting as much money in sponsorship. 
and that's going to ultimately kill us. But here's the issue of why they had to do what they did with the statement. Because they planted their flag initially on the human rights issues with Saudi Arabia and scoffed at the statement that Phil Mickelson put out there where he acknowledged all of it, but said he was taking the money anyway to establish something against the PGA Tour. So that, based on that and the way they, the, the sponsors and the way the PGA reacted, they can't now come back and say, you know what, we're going to lose too much money, so we've changed our stance. Their stance is firmly in the ground based on how they reacted at the time and how the public reacted at the time to the quote by Mickelson. And all along, they could have gone about this the way Dustin Johnson and Bryson DeChambeau and the litany of other guys who stayed silent and knew they were going to do this anyway and did it and took the money. 